off in, in, in you. We have found you know, epigenetic effects in humans. We know this is true in humans. So what this is again from the government, National Institute of Health, that these endocrine disruptors get passed on to the future generation, even if they've not been exposed at all. You able to read that? <laughs> it says, you know, all the stuff we've been talking about, you know, this in the reality. So the industry is taking the attitude, let's wait and see. Now remember how we started this conversation. Who actually determined who actually is watching over what's in our food? The industry. <laughs> FDA is really not doing anything. Well, so what do you, this happens in my class all the time. People just get really quiet. <laughs> <laughs> huh? That's it, I give up eating. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the air. <laughs> Talk, talk to each other. So what, what, do you, what do you take from this? Talk to each other, oh, yes. right? So, but Eric wants to supplement what I just said, and it was a very good point, so I wanted him to say that. Well, um, I took Lynn's class, and um, somebody, I heard somebody mention what about organic fruits and vegetables, and we think, okay, well, the source of this is the, the sprays and the chemicals and everything put on fruits and vegetables. Um, well, first of all, um, I, I, while I was in a class, I read that Silent Spring, which is a great mm -hmm. book. Um, Rachel Carson was amazing, um, but we saw that we still have high concentrations of DDT, even though DDT was banned more than three decades ago. DDT, even though it's no longer used, still exists in concentrations in the soil as high as 70% of the original applications. We actually still make DDT. We produce it. We just ship it to, it to other countries and have them use it. Then we eat their food. <laughs> A lot of food comes from other countries. DDT still uses an anti-malarial agent in some countries. Food of some of our food comes from South America and Africa areas that do have issues with malaria, so that's another issue. Um, also, how many of your organic fruits and vegetables get packaged in plastics? Um, so just because something's organic doesn't necessarily mean it contains any less chemicals. Like I said, chemicals stay in the soil, so just because you don't use, or, use organic based fertilizers this year doesn't mean that the sprays from synthetic fertilizers aren't still in the soil in concentrations for many decades to come. So. Thank you. Now, just, just to make you feel better, maybe not, that all these chemicals are also found in these, in these creatures. <laughs> so it's, you, you, there's no discrimination against you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> what? Polar bears don't go to McDonald's, but <laughs> the next one, please. So really what I really... <laughs> I mean, what I really want, like I said, what I really want to do is to have everybody start thinking about these things. And ultimately, there is no such thing as a healthy person when the planet is sick. We have to make ultimately the connection between our personal health to the health of the planet. So basically, when you put stuff out there, it is going to come back to you one way or another. So okay, what are we going to eat? So like, oh, I'm just not going to eat. Well, you, can you stop breathing? Can you stop drinking water? So what does it really mean? I really, I really, this is what I want to leave you with, that question. What does this really mean? Now, people say this, Lin, you can't make people so depressed. They go, oh, I can't do anything. Oh, I'm not going to do anything. But then you, then you also people here say, well, you know, um, you know, you have to hit bottom before you come up. Well, they're kind of like, so what do you, which way do you go? You know, you're not going to do anything until you hit bottom, and you don't tell them they've hit bottom? Ignorance is not um, understanding. Knowledge is power. Even though it may not be happy knowledge, <laughs> it does increase power. Thank you. Thank you. But both Shard and I have gotten this response. 
Both have got this response saying, I don't want to go to this workshop because I don't want to know. That's because people don't know what to do about it because the problem seems huge. It's like nuclear weapons a while ago. It's so big. How could one little person or even 10 little people or even 1,000 little people against corporations who control so much of the power structure in our country, how are they going to make a difference? Thank you for, for articulating that because that's what everybody thinks. That's the unfortunate thing. That's what everybody thinks. Corporations are not mystical, magical. How do they get their powers? They come power by money, by we giving them money. And the only way you can make difference is through individuals. I know a lot of people you know, get into politics and want to change laws and stuff like that. You know, most of you know marijuana is not legal, yeah? I'm just I'm speaking to the wrong crowd. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> To me, law makes really no difference, unfortunately. And unfortunately, money corrupts, power corrupts, and the, you know, there's, we don't even want to go there. The only difference that can be made are made, going to be made by individuals. And the individuals need to understand they have hit bottom. The bottom's been here for a while. I thank you all for your attention. Thank you.